Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piskor. Today we're unboxing a very heavy box <laughs> from Kevin Fong. So I assume this is full of comics, and uh, we're going to dig in and see what, what he sent us. Straight out of Brooklyn, I solicit the Kayfabers to send us their doubles, and Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Fong obviously showed and proved. All right, thanks. Well, well, thank you when we're done, Kevin. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> A1, this is always the book you find in the beginning of the, uh, if you find alphanumerical comics, always in the beginning. Smart title. Yes. I think this was a British, uh, headed up by, uh, I think, a British crew. So you see like Dave Elliott, Gary Leach, whose name you recognize, I think, from early Miracle Man. Yep. Uh, and, and several other things. But uh, basically an anthology of these guys. Oh, Barry Windsor Smith. Yeah, that's real nice. This is always an attractive book. I think there are two volumes of it. I've never seen published. it. Yeah, I've never seen it, man. I'm, I'm interested. This is really nice looking. I'm not sure who this artist is. Looks close to Leech, I would bet. Yeah, it might be. Very clean. Yeah, Gary Leech art, good eye. Yeah, he's fresh in my mind with our Read More Comics episodes. Eddie Campbell. You know, you might compare this to something like um, the American Deadlines. Yeah. You know, it's 80s anthology, but in this case with a, with a very British slant. What do we have here? Carla Speed McNeil's Finder, like an omnibus version. She's she's always been at SPX, always does good business. And there was a video, like, I let you borrow this DVD called uh, Small Press right, Unmasked or something like that. And, and, and that's how I became acquainted with her work. She goes in, her, to, she talks about her process in that thing, man. And, you know, I appreciate... Have you read Finder? The rigor of it. No, me I didn't. either. This is a great. This is a great book. I feel like this is one maybe we'll pass back and forth because I've always heard great things about the book. It's sci-fi, which for a while that wasn't too big in American comics. It's self-published, so pretty cool. Black Diamond Detective Agency. This is Eddie Campbell. Yeah, this is when like first second did things other than little kid comics and uh, nonfiction. Eddie Campbell watercolor too looks really nice. Yeah, his classic lettering style. Yeah, I, I've definitely gone through Eddie Campbell phases. Big fan. There you go. <laughs> the, the Bible for Brian Michael Bendis. Is that true? Robert McKee's story. Yeah, this is everything you need to know about writing uh, screenplays, scripts, at least according to do Robert you, McKee. Do you have this thing? Uh, I have read it. I don't own a copy. I've gotten, I've borrowed it from people and gotten it out of the library. It's an interesting read. It's pretty fun, very practical. And he gives seminars, Robert McKee. goes around and gives these very entertaining talks. And if you've ever seen the movie Adaptation with Nicolas Cage, yeah. he's a character in it played by Brian Cox. And it's so fantastic because Nicolas Cage is a screenwriter struggling with screenwriting and goes and, and takes Robert McKee's seminar and then talks to him about you know how things work and he champions stuff like Casablanca I think is, is one that he puts up as being a, a great script so it's, well, it's pretty fun well I'm knee deep in my writing phase man so this might be a good thing to to uh, unpack ASAP. I would say for sure you know I don't think any of these writing books are like the end all be all but I think they all have useful information and this is no exception Polly Bed, Death of Spider-Man, speaking of Brian Michael Bendis, Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, I don't know what we'll do with this. I hate to open a Polly bag, so yeah, maybe we'll flip for that one. <laughs> John Pound, he painted a bunch of uh, Garbage Pell Kid cards. Is this all John Pound? It's Blackthorn. <laughs> Blackthorn. <laughs> He's a good cartoonist, man. He's a good drawer for sure. Instant Piano. This was a... Anthology that Dark Horse put together. Mark Badger, Kyle Baker, Robbie Bush, Stephen DeStefano, and Evan Dorkin. I wonder how Evan feels about getting, like, the last billing. Yeah, I thought it might rotate. Uh, yeah, there's some different orders on, well, maybe it's alphabetical. So he probably feels okay. You would think if your last name starts with a D, though, you'd be higher than last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody talks highly about Instant Piano, though. It's a good-looking anthology, you know, we were looking at A1. This is another group of very talented cartoonists and uh, pretty highly regarded anthology of their work. Probably from mid-90s, early 90s. Yeah. Roger Langridge. This is one of the early books that I saw at SPX. And he was selling original pages from this thing. And, you know, when you reduce artwork, it tightens up. But, man, his originals are not much bigger than this. And they're still tight as hell. Uh, just as perfect looking. No white out. Yeah, I actually have a page. I might have bought it from that exact show, Ed, because he wasn't charging enough, in my opinion, which yeah. means I could afford one. Right. But they're gorgeous. Like his his inking and rendering, 
it's very tight, like uh, Jim Woodring or Charles Burns. You know, it's its own style, but just super tight, like you say. What these look like is almost what the originals look like. Just crisp, clean, beautiful. Great cartoonist. Big fan of Roger Langridge. Are we tapping a Ron Lynn vein or something? I don't know who this is. Uh, oh, Marshall Rogers. Yeah, he did the first, I don't know how many of these, but, but quite a run on these early Silver Surfer Volume 3 or so, whatever this is from the 80s and, and 90s. And yeah, there does seem to be a run of these things. Have you read much Silver Surfer? I would uh, mess around with it a little bit here and there. Like Ron Lim was pretty much the guy on board whenever I checked it out. But the reason I even bought them in the first place... That's a beautiful picture. Yeah, it was because of the uh, the impossibly hard um, Nintendo yeah, Ron game. Lim. Boy, that's a nice... That, that whole thing looks really good. So, a little run of those. I didn't know they made an Andre the Giant comic. <laughs> I don't hate that drawing of Andre. <laughs> this feels like a, a book that I would maybe be dismissive of, but I, I like these. Uh, I kind of like that that drawing. Keeps in the spirit of kayfabe. Put that in the box of gimmicks. Red one. This is uh, Terry and Rachel Dodson and Xavier Dorison, who I have not heard of. Image book from 2015. Man, that's a lot of drawing. It's crazy how good an average comic book looks these days. Yeah. You know, compare this to whenever I was reading comics in, you know, 1994 or something. It's phenomenal. This would be the best looking comic published in 1994. And now it's like, yeah, it's new, new, one of 20 new image books this week. The bar is raised. I'm going to just pull this out right, right away. Oh, yeah. These, these Iron Mans, because these are, uh, these are amazing comics right here. Yeah, it'll be. It, I have some stuff to say about those. Yeah, this is the Armor Wars two JRJR, uh, written by I believe John Byrne, and uh, the work. The work is cool. It's a very sound JRJR, but one of the one of the highlights of the this run uh, for Armor Wars two. Let me see if it's in here. Is 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 the color? Yeah, it, I know the issue you're talking. There, there's one in particular with lasers, and they use a lot of white. And it's fantastic coloring. Boy, is that good. Yeah, like I'm trying to see, like I thought it was maybe this issue. Sorry to go back, but this one picture just was a standout. Yeah. Romita Jr. is so well suited to Iron Man because he has that blocky three-dimensional style. Yeah. It really fits the character well. well I guess this is the... Could it be this issue? Yeah, I don't know, but it's very fun. It's Iron Man fighting robots. Like This is everything I want in, in a comic as a kid. Basically, in my Grand Design comic, where I use like pure white, yes. it's something I sort of stole from these Armor Wars 2 issues. And one of them has to be the one, because I think they're all here. Yeah, I know what exactly what you're talking about. I'm... It's this one. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it's this one for sure. Like... Yes. Like this shit. Like, look at that, man. Uh, they, That's so good. That's so good. It only gets better, too. This stuff really sings whenever you get a colorist. Whenever you get that whole creative team working together, yeah. it really sings. That's cold cash money right there, man. Yeah. What a spread. But that this, whole spread's beautiful. Yeah. That's the stuff. <laughs> yeah. That is the stuff. Yeah. The green is like the behind the light source for the yellow. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So it's Paul Beckton, I believe. Um, nope. And just more of it, you know, like, like this is where I, you know, got my inspiration for that use of white that I, that I've been using in, in grand design, man, because it's so freaking effective. Yeah, it's really strong. Work. This is the issue. Everybody should run out and go get this one. This is, John Romita Jr.'s had a great long run, but there are some real high points and, and that feels like a leveling up. Tells of the Pet Avengers. I know nothing about this. Yeah, you can keep that one. <laughs> I bought Trial of Moon Knight off of the, uh, I don't know if it was off the stands. I don't know if it was a newsstand book when I was buying it, but this was like the first Moon Knight I ever read. Interesting. I, I had some from this run because they would come in these like, you know, tw 20 comics for $5 at Toys R Us blister pack things. Justice Society of America. Not a comic I've ever read before. Maybe worth a look. 
I like how this looks. Yeah, it's Mike Perrobeck, and 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 uh, we we lost him. We lost him early, but he took over the penciling duties on Batman Adventures. And oh, that makes sense. And his stuff is is really really sound and and very attractive. This is before Batman Batman Adventures. I like but how he clean still, it is. Yeah, he still has that that kind of uh, you know that solid foundation with the drawing, simple line, f- fun style. A little run of these. Very nice. Let's pull out this thing. The Manhattan Projects. Jonathan Hickman. The big X-Men. Is he revamping the X-Men? I think that's a big mainstream story at the moment. I didn't know they made X-Men comics after Chris (laughs) Claremont. (laughs) He's cool. I was on a panel with him. He does a lot of writing for Marvel at this point, um, but his background is as a designer. So I was on a design panel with him once, and uh, you know you can see from the cover that's a very different looking cover than what you typically what what we've pulled out of this box so far, for example. Yeah. And uh, good good guy. Issue twenty one of the Demon. Hopefully that indicates a Lobo guest star. Maybe, <laughs> not sure. One of those exploitative uh, cameo appearances where they just show up on the cover. Yeah, it could be Punisher in the new Fantastic Four, for instance. Oh, there, there he was. Demon and Lobo seems like a good fight. I was a really cool Lovecraftian monster right there. Five issue miniseries of Dark Horse Presents number 100. <laughs> I remember buying some of these. <laughs> Man, starting off strong. Art yeah, Adams there. Y- yeah, I, I, in the other room, I have the one with the Frank Miller cover with the. Uh, it's not Lan- Lance Blastoff. It might be Lance Blastoff. That who's the, right. who's the guy from Toy Story? <laughs> wow. Oh, no, that's Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Damn, I'm getting old. Paul Pope, Evan Dorkin. Yeah, man, they they got the heavy hitters to to do work on on this five issue mini series <laughs> of Dark Horse Presents number one hundred. Mike what Richardson, smart dude, but that might have not been the way to go. <laughs> Here we go, man. Is that the run? Four issues. One, three, and four. We're missing issue two in this run. This was such an important comic book for me. This was the book self published by Steve Bissett. And black and white and just gorgeous. Gorgeous lettering, gorgeous artwork. This was one of the few comics I took to art class and my art teacher did not dismiss. I, I consider it to be way ahead of its time because... I think so too. I, I had a, a conversation with him when we were doing our Sojourn <sighs> episode. stunning. And I, and I told him like, dude, you need to get a book agent because graphic novels are the thing now and you could get an agent and like there could be 10 tyrant graphic novels because that's what this was designed to be it was going to be the life story of this of this uh tyrannosaurus rex and you know and you know we just saw the egg getting yes. dropped you don't even see the damn tyrannosaurus get born until issue three it's amazing and and in the back you know he talks about like it's very heavily researched so yeah. part of this this was an original scene that was redrawn because some new research emerged that, that suggested that the birthing was different and then even uh when he did put pencil to paper in like decided the issue was done, there would be things that change, and yeah. he would just cite it in the back. Very, very rich. I discovered it through Palmer's Picks from Wizard Magazine. Yeah, it's it's a great one, and I'm sure we'll talk about it more, but the page layouts, it's just really cool. And Dinosaurs, this would have been my favorite. Like, this should be a huge seller that every, like, six-year-old boy, it's their favorite thing on Earth. It was my favorite comic for a minute. I just, you know, wish it kept going. I don't know these, man. Mighty Tiny... Yeah, I've never heard of this. Um, I'm very interested. Antarctic Press. So this is the uh, the company Ninja High School built. Yeah. It's not bad looking art. Is that it's been been done copyright, but uh, some Pat Duke story and art. And but the upfront stuff is all okay. been done. Man, that guy must have must have created five thousand fucking pages of this stuff. <laughs> Ooh, two issues of Ragman number one. Cool, we don't have to fight over that. <laughs> Ragman was, uh, boy, there's a lot of Ragman. Cry of the Dead, apparently a Ragman miniseries I've never heard of. Ragman was a Joe Kubert character, is yeah, that right? Joe Kubert, Bob Kaniger. There were going to be, there was going to be like a new imprint. And, uh, you know, Jake Diorgiano was going to do a story. Lee Elias was going to have his own book. One or two other people. But whenever they had that, that calling and, and canceled a bunch of things... Only thing that survived uh, was Ragman, and it only survived long enough for Joe and Bob to finish their story. It's neat to see the nine-panel grids. I just picked up some Keith Giffen Heckler, and it was nine-panel grids. So, of course, we all know it from Watchmen and a few other places. 
but seeing it in like these kind of era comics is always a little bit overwhelming. Like, man, that's dense. So we got a Michael Golden vein. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Whoa, man, we got a bunch of Mike. We got. Fuck. We might have the run here. We might have the that run. Could be a Mike that could be a binder uh, <laughs> option. Now. Yeah. No, this isn't like volume one. Oh, this is an annual. Yeah, Steve Ditko art. Annuals. Here are the Michael Golden joints. Do you have a favorite Michael Golden era? I do. I like I like the Nom. Yeah. I like the G.I. Joe covers. Um, yeah, all his cover work from when I was reading, you know, late 80s or into the 90s, because he did some Batman stuff that was really cool, some Punisher stuff. He'd do all those color sets that were pretty unique, or at least at the front of using things like full magenta and things against, like, blues really stood out yeah i asked him about his process was certainly with some of the gi joe covers that have like no black holding lines and look yeah. painted and shit and he's like i was adobe photoshop before they had adobe <laughs> photoshop he told me did yeah, the first I know people that swear by micronauts is like some of their favorite comics yeah he did the first 12 man and, and what you see in these pages is him just becoming a more confident artist it starts off looking like fanzine artwork mm -hmm. uh but then you see he's he's figuring shit out like very very rapidly benefits of working on a damn uh, monthly grind but let's just see how deep it goes man <laughs> couple missing issues but we're getting up to the 30s now definitely uh did uh did bill mantlow write it all i probably I, I would guess so i don't know for sure are you old enough for uh micro man i figures? love this this corner box beautiful uh i never had micronaut figures i, I think they might have been right before my time keith giffen mm. oh, we're getting to the direct market <laughs> i think that's what the diamond is gil kane cover suite this is amazing yeah fun looking comics i don't really make comics like these anymore you would see Micronauts in the subscription section on the back of the books and wonder, like, why the heck don't I ever see these things? Because I had no idea of, like, comic shops and how, like... That's a fun cover. Very uh, yeah, cartoon. Yeah, see, this is, like, this is, like, the way Golden would... Yeah, it is Michael Golden. The way he would color those G.I. Joe covers and stuff. Spawn... What's happening here? <laughs> Todd McFarlane on the horn. Yeah, man. And those guys all jock ride fucking Michael Golden, too. Jesus. The other thing I'm always impressed by is you'll have like a toy comic or whatever, and it runs... How many issues are here? 50 <laughs> issues? You know, yeah. like, it, like you could never do that today. It's amazing. Minister Jesus. Picked up an issue for a quarter. I might need that one, actually. Oh, this is the run. Sweet. This is that odd size. Like, why did you do this size, guys? That's more <laughs> Ted McKee Mondo. Yeah, I don't have that either, man. I don't know it. Looks really cool. Yeah. Is this... Uh... That looks like more of that Mondo. Yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to give this a closer look. That's McKeever I haven't read. Late, late era McKeever. Straggler from the Silver Surfer run earlier marvel 2 and one ron wagner man I, I was a i was a big fan of uh of all this stuff oh but this is a john byrne words and pictures boy that's nice with joe sinnott inks yeah pretty classic stuff yeah you know john byrne was fucking jerking off all over the place oh, to, yeah. to get you know kirby's anchor from ff a lot of ads in these old shits, i think man. a lot of a lot of pencilers felt that way you know having a chance to kind of really try to rekindle that kirby magic Daredevil 277. Rick Leonardi cover and interior. Rick Leonardi's a guy I haven't read a ton of. This big run Spider-Man 2099, maybe, he, and he was Cloak a, and Dagger. He was a very reliable cleanup hitter whenever a penciler started to get behind on deadlines. He would pop in for a cup of coffee, man, blast out the issue. He could... He could hold his own against any of the artists that he would be up against. So it would be between Silvestri's. Yeah, that shit is dope. I... I got that shit the day it came out, by the way. <laughs> Eric Larson would always talk up Rick Leonardi. Like, that's how I first he first came on my radar was those early Dragon Back letter columns and stuff. A couple Garth Ennis 
Punishers. I this is probably the last monthly comic I ever bought, up to a point. Yeah. Pirouette. I am unfamiliar with this. Yeah, me too. Black Mask. Um, I think they might have published uh, Alexis Zira Space Raiders. Riders. Space Riders. I think that's Black Mask. Yeah. There's so many of these smaller indie companies, I I, I get them confused. <laughs> that's me being an old man where I'm confusing. <laughs> Larry Hama back on back on uh, G.I. Joe duties, man. And this guy, Sergio Cariello. He was my life drawing teacher at the Kubert School. Really? Yeah. Have and you it, kept up with him or any, any highlights? No, not really. Like, uh, I could I could break kayfabe and give you an interesting secret. Whenever whenever they um, had the Kubert School correspondence courses, the idea was like, Joe is going to review your, your submissions. Um, Sergio figured out how to do the best, closest approximation of a Joe Kubert uh, uh, signature than <laughs> wow. anybody. And he was really the guy who fucking reviewed your thing. So, so don't brag to me about Joe Kubert reviewing your thing because it was really Sergio. <laughs> Exo Squad tops uh, early 90s run. And I believe that's a Mike Golden cover, speaking of Mike Golden. Yeah, it is, man. And that's from a, that's from a cartoon, man. That cartoon would have been on right before Savage Dragon on USA. But after wrestling... <laughs> <laughs> I remember it well. Eh, some bullshit. Image book. Looks like an Ashley Wood cover, but I don't think it is. Maybe an Ashley Wood super fan. That's fun. I always like motorcycles in, in comics. Or I guess in real life, too. It's all right. Big run of this stuff. Yeah, who knew? I like this guy's work. Hayden Sherman. I like how this stuff looks. Uh, my homeboy Kagan. Kagan McLeod, man. Like, uh, drawing some cuts. So this is like a Toronto, this is a Toronto book with that, uh, that one writer guy. Yeah, Kagan, book I know him from is Infinite Kung Fu. Yeah. Which I think he self-published for a while and then maybe Top Shelf put out a big collection of it. But super cool stuff. Like, he's a great illustrator. Yeah, he is, man. And, I, st uh, I stay at his studio. Man, uh, point him at, at Kung Fu and I am in love. Yeah, he also did this, like, amazing hip-hop poster with about yes, four or 500 that. portraits. And it always shows up online with, like, you know, Jay-Z holding it up and like, oh, yeah, there I am. And I'm like, yeah, damn. He's done two of those, I think. Really good stuff. Copperhead, another image book. It's more more of that image stuff. DC's Demon. Let's see, this is the Michelle Fife vein. We're, yes. We're, we're tapping, man. I see a blue beetle underneath. Yeah, this is the Michelle Fife spot. I don't know if I've ever read any Blue Beetle. I only fucked with the Charlton shits. Yeah. But it's Len Wein. Like, like he could he could write a story that makes you not think you wasted your money. You'll forget about it in two seconds, but, you know, he knows what the hell he's doing. Yeah, this is, this is the Fife <laughs> section, man. It's nice that it's... Uh, Little runs <laughs> instead yeah. of one issue at a time. This is John Byrne, uh, Roger Stern, John Byrne, and Ron Wilson, maybe? Doing the Atom. Ooh, we got that Baldwin cover. I love his covers. I do, too. I mean, he was, this, this was his output for a while mm -hmm. there, man. He must have got, like, 5G's a cover. I bet you. I bet he did when he sold them. They are on Heritage. You could look at a lot of this stuff, man, and I'm talking like fifty, sixty thousand dollar pieces. I, guys don't do pen and ink work the way he does. You know, it's exceptional. So some Zafino. It, it looks nice as an original. Yeah, this is this is cool. We've talked about Zafino in past Wizard episodes. One of the great illustrators that worked for Marvel briefly for a couple of years, and this was his stab at a monthly book, um, Terror Inc. <laughs> really great, great artist. I'm just going to hold on to that one. Because you have this, right? Mm -hmm. Civil War II. <laughs> Put that in a gym pile. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Yeah, it is. But, uh, 
Silver Surfer. But the more important thing here is Atlantis attacks. And this is like when little Eddie P was reliably going to the right aid on his bike uh, right outside of the apartment complex, man, and picking up comics on the regular, dude. Of course, the New Mutants annual number five with the pink Rob Liefeld cover. That made me a comic fan forever. This is Sienkiewicz. Bill it Sienkiewicz is. Sienkiewicz Moon Knight. Yeah, I have a run of this, actually. Yeah. And this is, we get to see his progression, like, in the pages of Moon Knight. Here he's still kind of rooted in, like, house style. But you could see quirkiness. Yeah. You could see something about the burst. Interesting t team up there is Klaus Jansen on inks. Another Star Wars comic for Jim. <laughs> Some Warren Ellis comics for Jim and uh, Alpha Flight. This is about when, like, when Alpha Flight One came out. Steve Siegel, um, I, like, I was officially kind of done with with mainstream comics. And I'm not saying it's like Siegel's fault. He's actually a cool guy and all that. See, this is the correspondence courses, man. <laughs> this guy didn't sign your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't wait to get to this. Yeah, that looks like a Brennan McCarthy cover. Definitely. And interior, it looks like. Yeah, this is fun. Let's have a peek at that. Brennan McCarthy, great cartoonist going back into the late 80s, but also the guy behind Fury Road, one of the big visual designers behind Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, he said that Mad Max was his Star Wars, and if he had a chance to, to uh, have some creative... Uh, control over over Mad Max. He would basically do what, what Fury is that? Road turned into. <laughs> yeah, man, like really interesting artist and quite a career. You know, you, you go back through his comics history, and you can see a lot of digital on display here. But painting, multimedia, just just the guy who was working with whatever was in front of him. Autograph on that. A couple of them. That makes them more valuable. <laughs> Look, man, it's made by a CIA agent <laughs> <laughs> who's undercover as a comic writer. These guys did what they could. There was just like a little, like, I had high hopes for Big Bang, basically. I never read Big Bang. It was kind of on the edge of my awareness. I think they advertised in some books that I would read. Yeah, and image I books. like how they look, though. Like, it might be more appealing to me now than it was then. And they were around for a while, are they? They Maybe still doing things. They would they would jump into uh, Image Comics not not long after this. So they self published these gimmicks. Look, he even signed it. Yeah, out of Michigan. So many cartoonists and comic books coming out of Michigan. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch up here and. This is a good book. Not simple. Natsumi Ono. Sounds good. So you have you read this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a copy. You could you could take that one, man. It's a, it's a, it's shoujo. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. I have not read it, so. Yeah, it was recommended to me by some of the uh, students in Denmark, so. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Let's see. Saving me fucking Propeller Man. <laughs> <laughs> Propeller Man's a cool looking book. It's a good title. So it looks like we got the run. Yeah, I didn't know there were that many issues of it. I thought it was like four. It looks pretty cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've picked this up in the past. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having this in the stacks. Well, it's all yours, Ed. Yeah, I like it. Dark Horse, possibly a European artist. I always think the painted stuff in the 90s is, is often European. And, and these colors, too, feel, feel, like, feel British to me. Like, I don't think it, like, in, you know, that's a crazy name, but... Yeah, it could be from anywhere. Those are beautiful colors. Yeah. Is this the Ron Lim stuff that he was doing in tandem with uh, Silver Surfer? It's a Ron Lim cover. Captain America. A couple issues of Captain America from 91. Rick Levins is the penciler on this one. I was reading Cap at, at, at around this point, man. Um, almost almost because like I felt like you were supposed to read Captain America. Yeah, I tried Captain America when I was getting into comics to begin with. This stuff looks pretty good. Queen Greg, of Country. Greg Rucka. He drew it too? Nah, I just wrote it. Man, how the fuck you you get top billing, man? How the fuck is your, your name the only name on the gimmick? He must have created it because they ruled through illustrators. It ran for a while, almost like a monthly. So he must have created it and then page rated. I see. He's the illustrators is my guess. He's okay in my book for one reason. 
his son is a big hip hop family tree fan. Whenever I go to the Pacific Northwest, the the whole family shows up, and I'll 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 hang out with the son for like a half hour talking rap music and shit. The Mighty Avengers, not that mighty at this time period. I feel like they struggled for a bit. Al Milgram artwork, 1984 issue. They might have still been on top then. Secret Origins, starring Justice League America, Keith Giffen. Suicide Squad, now this is FIFA. Yeah, this is FIFA This sure. is definitely right up his alley. I don't know if I've ever read any Suicide Squad. I just got a hold of a whole collection from my homeboy Sam, and there's a bunch of the earliest Suicide Squads in there. It looks really good. It looks fun. Yeah, this stuff I like John right. Ostrander from uh, Grim Jack. An Elongated Man. I hated that character. This is just a stretchy character. That's fun. Look and at that guy. Cobra. Straight out of Cobra. Yeah, yeah. Serpentor. <laughs> I, I mean, I think That's his name really, is Cobra. I like this double dragon art. I don't remember seeing this. Is that art that you saw a lot? Mm-mm. Yeah, just for a shitty Game Boy game. That's the art that I would always see in the ads. Yeah. <laughs> What's this comic we're looking at? <laughs> Video game ads? <laughs> this captures my interest. I think that's Tim Truman. Oh, yeah. So I think it he is. wrote it. Yeah, this is a, a fun book. You can put that one in your pile. There's little shades of uh, Paul Galassi in this one. Little bits. Mark Schultz represents. This is awesome. I, I saw this somewhere and I wanted to see the color version. So it's kind of cool that there's one in this box. Yeah, black and white Xenozoic Tales published by Kitchen Sink and then Epic did a color uh, run of these. I may prefer them in black and white. I don't know. A little, little dark, a little overbearing here. Little Strowman. Hopefully. He didn't do the whole Alien Legion gimmick? There's a lot of Alien Legion stuff. Chris, Chris Warner. Warner. That's interesting. Yeah, drew the first Predator miniseries, how I became a Chris Warner fan. Lettered uh, by Phil Felix, my lettering teacher from the Kubert School. Yeah, I think there's like three volumes and some standalones and miniseries and stuff for Alien Legion. Yeah, who knew? Look uh, at that. Uh, yeah, I have something to say to the kayfabers out there, man, because it's, it's real cool and fashionable right now to rag on uh, Robert Crumb. So any uh, of you kayfabers out there who have any guilt and want to throw the baby out with the bathwater man and divest yourself of any and all Robert Crumb comics or artwork let me direct you to our P.O. Box <laughs> Cartoonist Kayfabe P.O. Box 3071 Munhall, Pennsylvania 15120 we will dispose of this poison yes. <laughs> for you Like uh, never you mind, you will be guilt free your conscience will be clear just send all those heathenous sacrilegious vile Robert Crumb comics to this P.O. box. Yeah, I think Thank we'll, you. Be, we'll be doing everyone a service. We'll take those out of circulation for you. Look at this, heathen. Like, why would you want this in your fucking collection, right? I already have a copy of this. You want this one, Jim? I do want this. Yeah. Do you know if he's drawing straight to ink on these? I know he's referencing photos and stuff, but he's drawing straight to ink is my impression. Is that... Now, that's a good question, and, and I don't know the answer. But what I do know is that in that Crumb documentary, he is sitting there just with a rapidograph. Now, this is not rapidograph. Uh, maybe some of it is, but you'll see thicker lines. Um, and he is drawing stuff as good as this in just rapidograph. So, maybe. You could easily find the photo, and K. Yeah. K Faber should, should do it. Um, because it's it's remarkable like how close he is with this uh, Serena. Where Where is it? You could find the photo for this really easy if you type in, I think it's either Venus, yeah, Serena Williams, and just compare. It's so close, man. He's such a good fucking artist. So run of ringside. First five issues. This is in my box of gimmicks. Joe Keating, uh, writer that I'm friends with. And uh, hey, if it's a wrestling comic, I'm going to give it a look. This is mostly, um, it's, it's more of a crime comic. You know, you don't see a lot of the in-ring stuff. So it's it's more crime comic than uh, wrestling comic. I like the art. Yeah. Hero Camp. Robbie Rodriguez is the uh, po probably known for Spider-Gwen. Oh, for real? And I don't know if we're supposed to say this or not. Maybe breaking kayfabe. He's wrestled as a luchador. We'll censor that. 
<laughs> Do you, I wonder if he draws with his mask on. <laughs> Hellboy, Beast of Burden crossover, Evan Dork and Jill Thompson, Mike Mignola. I assume Mignola is probably a story consultant, co-plot co or something like that. This stuff's beautiful. Yeah. This stuff's really nice. Yeah, a lot happened with that Beast of Burden property. Uh, and I believe only like six or seven issues of the thing have ever saw the light of day so far, you know. So it's one of those like super promising, like really good uh, kind of elevator pitch kind of premise. I think they've gotten another artist that, that's, uh, they, they've resumed work on it, I think, because Joe Thompson's just, I guess, in demand and doing a million things, which I think you can see why. Like, oh, yeah, she's great. She's always gorgeous been, stuff. She's always done beautiful work. This is a fun comic. If you haven't read this, Ed, you should take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to want to give that a shot. Man, I'm picking this one up. Can't go wrong with Charles Burns. Yeah, let's look at some of that early CB. And this is uh, stuff like Big Baby Strips, um, Dog Boy. These were ser these were serialized weekly. And oh, you remember, that is. like, I was asking uh, Burns one time when we were at TCAF, like, I can't figure out, like, where your stuff would cut off whenever you would put these out weekly. And he just said there was like basically no rhyme or reason. He would draw the page and then just like print this. Like, wow. like, like this piece would be yeah. what could fit on a week's worth of stuff. And then it would be like this and like say the first of the next page. But, you know, he was working in, like this. It's just like that was a viable kind of distribution mechanism for him to like get his work out there. Yeah, they issued these in paperback and hardcovers. And I messed up and got like, three of the four hardcovers or something and then one went out of print and I didn't get it. Yeah, I don't have El Borba. Yeah, I do have that one. Kevin Baker, Daniel Zezold, I'm so sorry, uh, Luna Park, Vertigo book. Good I like his cover. art. I, I don't know if you've seen his art. I, I know he's done a few different comics, so I've come across it in different places, but very graphic style, very heavy kind of black line whenever he's using a line so i should learn to pronounce his name Could recommend him a little little more easily scarlet traces the great game Dis disraeli as the artist i don't know uh lan ian uh, oh is that oh my goodness dyslexia yeah no that's definitely ian um disraeli I, is uh he, he's i guess english and comes out of... I know he did some Deadline stuff. Late period, 2000, 2000 AD. AD. That's very attractive. Wow. Kane. Edward Riso, artist. Longtime 100 Bullets illustrator. I don't know, Ricardo Barrier Rowe? Oh, man, I'm... I feel so bad about these names. Yeah, we're not malicious. Oh, it said Strip Art Syndicate. It's like, like it, this was a daily strip? Strip Art Features? I don't know. Maybe, maybe? I don't know. Slovenia. Interesting. Yeah. I, I like uh, Rizzo's work a lot, man. Yeah, I do too. I think early on I, I thought of it as a little Frank Miller-esque, but then like those two both sort of diverted pretty hard in, in different directions. But I always like the guys who are spotting blacks. You know, I always think of that as very design conscious. Looks good. Well, some more look, looks like, could it be like album reprints? That's my guess. Looks very European to me. Yeah. Although it also looks a little strip-like. Those tiers are very neatly divided. Yeah, I think that's what we're hitting here. It's in a book. Not sure what that means. When I was in, when you were in Uncle M, didn't you see this character like on a bunch of shit? Like, mm, I either saw this character or one that looked very, <laughs> yeah, indistinguishable. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing, man. Like, like, like this and this. It is like. This is like the European like house style. Or there something. is a version of that, and it's it's very well done. Like the craft is very high, but it all looks from, the same. from an outsider, you know, from the ugly American point of view, like it's hard for me to distinguish what I'm looking at. It's almost a Bigfoot uh, humorous 
adventure type style that's applied to a lot of comics and like I said very well done you know I mean look the drawings excellent but I don't have the eye or I haven't read enough of it to really distinguish it you know one that I do want to read uh is a smurfs yeah you I know? hear good things about that in Edgington and uh I N J Colbard that's quite a book it's a hefty one Yeah, it's all yours, man. Let's <laughs> see some Lovecraftian stuff. It's funny, like, I just kind of, like, discovered Lovecraft for myself over the past year. Right. Now I see him everywhere. Yes. Makes sense. Looks good. Nice art. Sure. Cool, man. All right, dude. We should get off cam. Divide these shits up. Yeah, thank you, Kevin, very much for sending this. Uh, pretty good selection here. Some stuff I'm looking forward to reading. Okay, Fabers, if you're interested in uh, more unboxing videos, send them shits on to us, man. Happy to do it. P.O. Box 3071, Munhall, Pennsylvania, 15120. But we we got to go divide these things up, man. we got a, about a half hour's worth of work to do, man. <laughs> and I have to go find a coin to flip, man. So you guys know what to do. Uh, like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon, and it'll let you know whenever we have new videos available. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe merch at our spread shop link below the video. Ah, uh, Jim, I think I found that quarter, man. Go give these people their marching orders. Read more comics. <laughs>